Rivers politics. Pro Fubara speaker emerges as PDP rejects impeachment calls. I am Bola Eba and this is Plus Politics. Lawmakers loyal to the River State Governor, Siminala Ifubara, on Wednesday elected the member representing Borne constituency, Victor Okojumbo, as the Speaker of the State House of Assembly. The pro Fubara lawmakers disclosed this on Wednesday night in a statement by Okojumbo and a factional clerk of the House, Dr. G. M. Gillis West. Okojumbo emerged as the functional speaker amid calls by the state or progressive congress caretaker committee and local government chairman in the state for the impeachment of the governor who got the backing of the people's democratic party on wednesday the pdp national publicity secretary debo Olugunba at a press conference in Abuja said the APC should perish the thought of Ubara's impeachment by the Assembly. At the inception of the current session last year, the State House of Assembly elected Martina Mewule, loyal to the Minister of Federal Capital Territory, Yeson Wike, as the Speaker of the House. However, the crisis in the state started later when the Assembly attempted to impeach the Governor. The crisis worsened as the State Assembly complex was demolished by the state government, which said the building was defective. The house was factionalized after Fubara's loyalist elected Edison Eye as the speaker. A truce initiated by President Bola Tinumbu led to the resignation of Eye and factions ceased to exist in the assembly. Lately, the crisis reignited after the State Assembly vetoed Fubara to pass the state local government amendment law, which empowers the council chairman to remain in office for another six months after the expiration of their tenure, should the governor fail to conduct local government elections. Despite the governor's objection, the Assembly exerted its authority by passing two bills. On Monday, Fubara denounced the Assembly as an unlawful entity, asserting that he did not recognize them. Furthermore, he maintained that the eight-point peace accord facilitated by the President was merely a political resolution rather than a constitutional matter. Consequently, on Tuesday, the State APC Caretaker Committee Chairman Chief Tony Okocha urged the 27 members of the Assembly aligned with the FCT minister to initiate impeachment proceedings against Fubara. However, the crisis took another dimension on Wednesday as lawmakers loyal to the governor elected Jumbo as the speaker. Joining us to extract this development, is the chairman of the local government area, River State, Samuel Umanosike. Also joining us is River State APC Publicity Secretary, Chibuike Kenga. The publisher, Christina Reports, is also with us. And River State APC spokesperson, Darlington Nwauju. A gentleman, welcome to Post Politics. Okay, let, let's start with uh, let's start with the chairman of Ukwere local government. I want to believe that uh, Ukwere local government is the local government where the uh, minister of federal capital territory uh, um, you know, comes from. Am I right? No, that's not correct. The minister is from Obiapo local government council. Obiapo, okay, uh, but. Uh, 
I, I want to believe that the, 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 the general the general tribal setting uh, is such that Obiapo is not too is not too traditionally and culturally far away from Mipe. Am I am I right or am I just speaking Obiapo local government is an equally speaking local government. Fantastic. I same was, culture, same people, same language. Like. Thank you very much for, for putting things in, in uh, the right perspective. Uh, would, it be, would it be out of place for me to say you are one of the loyalists of the, of the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory? Ardent loyalists. I didn't get that, sir. You're correct, sir. Okay. Now, what is the cause of the reemergence of this constitutional theater of absurdity that is uh, that is reenacting itself in in river state and and particularly how is it now tangentially connected to uh, the incumbent or majority of the incumbent local government chairman because a day or two ago uh, you people addressed the press conference uh, accusing the governor of not uh, working uh, of not working well with you people. You want to respond to that? No, there's nothing like accusing the governor of no one. Okay, well, he's uh, a three-tier and three-arm governance as organized by our constitution. The drafters of our constitution were very clear. They said there's going to be three arms of government, there's going to be three tiers of government. And then the three tier of government, the local government is the third tier, uh, while the state is the second tier, and the federal government is the first tier. The constitution has made provision for everybody's existence and operation. Um, I don't need to be a friend of the governor to carry out my responsibility as a local government in the Korean local government council. I swore an oath to protect the constitution of, Ni of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and to do good to all manner of men, irrespective of their tribe, um, language, and uh, color of whoever that comes my way. And I swore to an oath of allegiance and an oath of secrecy. For me, as far as we are concerned, we don't know how we got here, but we've just seen clearly that tyranny has reason in our land. A man who has painted the picture that he's calm, he doesn't speak in the public, he's very peaceful, is now all of a sudden uh, destroyed all facets of our constitution. This man, just a few days ago to your own hearing, came up and said that the reverse of assembly is existing because he wants them to exist. And that if he does not want them to exist, that they will not exist. And the next morning, we are hearing that he has proclaimed the third house because by the action of saying that um, one Oko Jumbo, who is a suspended member of the Western Assembly, who was suspended in October last year during the period while the impeachment notice was... which is the responsibility of the... House of Assembly to put checks and balances as we try in our constitution. This same governor, the next another house, which he said headed by Edison here, the same Edison here that he later told to step down. And so we were asking the constitution of Nigeria provide that a governor or any governor in Nigeria will have only one proclamation of house, which will last for four years except a court of competent jurisdiction states otherwise. But we're seeing a governor who swore to an oath to uphold the constitution, breaking down the rules of the constitution by going ahead to say he has proclaimed the first house led by Matis Amewule, second house led by Edison Ehe, and now a third house led by Okujumbo, who is a suspended member of Lula. And again, these issues are issues that are in court. This same governor uh, is okay. a party of a suit that is in court. Uh, okay. The so seven members are parties of suits that are in court. 
I'll come back to and you. And to talk about the local government chairman, let me, let me just drop this part before you come back to me. The local government chairman, I just say clearly, the constitution says that we are the chief accounting officers of our local government, and the laws of the federation says there should be fact where federal allocations are distributed to the states, and there should be jack where state allocations are distributed to the local governments because we have a joint revenue account. As we speak, it has just been authenticated that the governor has dipped his hand in the coffers of Ukraine local government and other local governments in River State, 23 of us, to pay salaries of council civil servants, excluding me, who is the chief accounting officer, the elected local government chairman, my elected councillors, and all political appointees. No other issue Okay, of let, let me come back to you on that. Let, let me come back to you on that. I'll come back to you on that because there are, there are grievous constitutional issues um, and constitutional um, matters revolving around what you have just alleged the governor to have done. Uh, Waoju, I, I particularly want to go to uh, Waoju. I hope I pronounced your name well. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, are you there? Is Waoju there? Please, please unmute your device. Please unmute your device, Wanju. Uh, I particularly want you to uh, go after the, the chairman uh, uh, because I know you are not quite uh, a supporter of uh, uh, for the Honorable Minister of Federal Capital Territory. Uh, you may not be a supporter of the governor per se, but at least you, you have a more a less um, fervid, a less partisan uh, position on this. Uh, are you on now? Hello, can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you now. Okay. Uh, well, you, the last time you, you joined me on air, you were the philosopher king. You were, you were yes. philosophizing, uh, using the ideals of exactly. politics, but it is now obvious that what is happening in your state are borders on incongruities, absurdities, and seeming constitutional madness. How do you want to explain this? Well, I, I think that, um, uh, like you rightly mentioned, our last conversation was uh, very educative, was quite enlightening, uh, and uh, there seems to be um, one week, one trouble for River State. Unfortunately, so. Uh, there seems to be one week, one trouble. And uh, it, it, is, um, it is not a good one for the image of the state and for anybody who is interested in the development of River State. Nobody who is interested, no student of good governance we be happy with the state of affairs of River State. And so uh, between uh, the last time we spoke and uh, today, there have been several uh, issues that, that are not very good, in fact, that demarcates the state, that discourages investment and investors from having any business to do with River State. And these are all political issues, issues that individuals, for their selfishness, has caused or brought upon the state. So, so that is where we are. And uh, the state is, uh, like you rightly mentioned, is in a, in a, a sort of a constitutional fiasco, where we now have, as it were, two speakers of the State House of Assembly. And uh, I, I do not think that this is proper for democracy. I do not think that this is proper for good governance. And um, it is it's, it's totally what is totally What is your what is your personal what is your personal opinion about the the newly re resurrected or newly uh, resuscitated uh, erstwhile defunct Edison AES? Uh, house that is now suddenly uh, suddenly resurrected 
What is your take? What is your direct take on that? I, I, I think that Yes, I mentioned very late last night. And yeah, I, I think I think that it is part of the the fiasco that is going on in River State, like I earlier on said, is the fact that individuals have chosen to be selfish. Individuals have, have chosen to be self seven. Individuals have decided that the interests of themselves and their political cronies and associates should be uh, over and above that of the state. And so when you have self, you know, being magnified over and above the interests of the state, that is what actually plays out. And it's and it's and it's uh, tit for that. That is what we are seeing. It is actually tit. So you are you are, you are not uh, you are, I want so, so much for you. That uh, hello, Waju. Hello, I've asked so much from uh, you, but I have not quite had a direct condemnation or a direct uh, uh, a direct uh, approval. Yes. Which side? Do, which side of the divide are you on? The sudden reemergence of an of another parliamentary entity in your state. Your state. Yes, like I said, I said it has become an issue of tit for that. It has become an issue of getting, uh, forming another leadership that will counteract what uh, Martin Samuel is perceived to be doing against the governor. And I am saying, as an individual, as a stakeholder in the Rivers Project, it is not, it is beyond political party affiliations. And so those who keep on uh, 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 gravitating towards uh, political uh, platforms and trying to massage the egos of their political platforms, I think it's uncalled for. I think that it is time for persons to be more patriotic than be more political. Okay, I'll, I'll come back. It is I'll come back to you. Oh, you, you. I'll come back to you later. I think it's about time I went to. Chibuke Ikenga. Chibuke Ikenga is the uh, is he the, is he, is he the acting or the uh, substantive publicity secretary of uh, of uh, uh, APC. Please correct me from your perspective. Chibuke. Right. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Bolova. I can hear you. Okay, I am I am the public secretary of the caretaker committee of the APC River State. Okay, thank you very much. Chibuke, you are a part of an executive that is the executive of the APC in River State and has constituted itself into a form of constitutional interloper. Your, your boss has directly, unexpectedly, and in ultra-partisan circumstance, called for the impeachment of the governor. Why? And what would be your response to, to my polite accusation of the, a body that you belong to? Thank you. We are not uh, constitutional interlopers. We respect the constitution and its tenets. We do respect um, all actions that are taken by by rivers people in government. Mr. Bola, are you on? I, 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 we are listening to you. Mr. Bola, can you hear me? We can hear you well enough, sir. Okay. We are clear. We are clearly concerned as a party, as an individual, we are very concerned about the turn of events in our state. Mr. Abola, we are very concerned about the governor becoming very condescending. The governor's love for impunity, the governor's love for dictatorship, despotism, and authoritarianism. The governor has disobeyed all due processes of the law 
and has taken laws unto his hands through self-help. You will agree with me that there was a presidential intervention for the peace processes in the states, and the governor was a signatory to it. And only for the governor to turn around to condemn it as a mere political resolution or recommendations. What is political about asking that local government elections be conducted as at when due? That is constitutional. That state House of Assembly members should not be intimidated. Their funds should not be withheld. Their statutory funds should not be withheld by the governor. It is constitutional. And that all the arms of government or organs of government must act independent of each other, but interdependent. Now, but the governor has gone ahead to take steps that would want to intimidate the arm of government, that would want to intimidate the state as assembly. The governor did that by claiming through his own proclamation that the local government, the uh, state assembly does not exist. The governor has withheld funds of the local government. The governor has been taking steps to spending our funds without appropriation act. The governor has taken such steps as insulting the elders of River State that they do not have elders in River State and therefore all their interest is about where, what they want to benefit and money. And the governor's uh, divisive rhetoric is dividing the ethnic nationalities that have been peaceful largely and that have cooperated over time. On the basis of all these considerations, as a party, we met and agreed that it's unfortunate that we have today a governor who does not respect the Constitution. He took an oath of office, he took a, the, uh, the oath of allegiance, etc., and has gone against all the provisions of the oath of office, of the, all the oath okay, okay, and okay. as well as uh, the let, me, let me quickly, uh, let me quickly uh, add this. Uh, 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 to, to, to correct the anomaly. Ikenga, Ikenga uh, you, you have made those points well enough, but uh, would you also want to uh, countenance and indeed rationalize the position of your party, especially in River State, uh, to the fact that the, the provision, there is a provision of the Constitution that speaks to the fact that when elected members of legislative houses or chambers, be it at the State House of Assembly or the House of Representatives or the Senate, when elected members on the platform of a particular party are cross carpet to any other party, they must automatically uh, vacate the, 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 their positions. And in the instance of River State now, your chairman spoke as the bona fide chairman of the party that the majority members of River State uh, House of Assembly belong to a couple of days and that in itself is a, is a slap on that major provision of the Constitution uh, on which the Supreme Court in Abegunde, uh, when the Labour Party uh, litigated against a member who cross carpeted, uh, the Supreme Court uh, ruled that Abegunde should vacate his position in the in the House of Representatives. So, how would you reconcile that? You are owning people whose mandates emanated on the platform of another party, and you. That is APC River State. You even have the, the your chairman even had the temerity to encourage them to impeach the governor. Yes, that's the position of our party as far today. I can tell you that they have assembly members who hitherto we are members of the PDP moved to our party, the APC, and we are happy about that. And then you know that the constitutional provision you are making reference to. There, was, there is a proviso in it that will legitimize any movement 
or any defection from one political party to the other, you are aware that there must be crisis in a political party from which the mandate was sought and upon which you represent the people at whatever position you occupy. And that when it becomes very challenging and difficult for you to continue to transact your business within the party as a result of this unity, crisis, and divisions in the party, you are at liberty to move to another party because it's freedom of, of association. And then at that point, it will be legitimized. And okay. I can tell I, you I, for I, free I come that the DP had had I come back to you. You've made, you've made, you've made that point state. well enough. You made that point well enough. Let, let me come back to you. Uh, you, you. You have quite well articulated what you believe and what your party believes to be the uh, the constitutionally consistent rationale uh, upon which you have inherited uh, PDP's uh, uh, mandate in your state House of Assembly. Okay, let me go to uh, the Honorable Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, okay, before I, before I even ask you a direct question, I think it is imperative at this juncture uh, to state categorically that we invited, we invited a prominent supporter of the governor to give balance to this show. In fact, the gentleman we invited is said to be uh, Okojumbo's uh, brother, um, and uh, he gave us his word that he was going to uh, participate. However, we wouldn't, know, we wouldn't know the circumstance that has made him not to participate so that whoever is watching uh, may not think that we have deliberately chosen uh, those who don't seem to hold the same position with the governor. Uh, Honorable Chairman, I want to believe that you are still a member of the PDP. A member of the People's Democratic Party. You are still a member of the People's Democratic Party. Yes, of course, I say so. I don't know if you're hearing me. Oh, fantastic. And the governor is also a member of the People's Democratic Party. Yes, of course. As so, long as we, as far as we know, for now. What is the what is your party doing to resolve this untoward furore and this? and this unfortunate development in is the party intervening directly to find a kind of middle way at least between those of you who are still ostensibly inclusive of the um, uh, honorable minister of the federal capital territory who attended one of the highest uh, one of the highest meetings of the party recently is the party doing anything known to you to bring about reconciliation, peaceful, and that will make, you know, that we allow for progress in the governance of the state? Well, before I answer that question, there's something that um, I need to bring to your knowledge that you raised while you were discussing with the uh, Chief Chibike Kinga. Um, you know, when people make this statement that... Um, 27 lawmakers vacated their uh, moved to APC, so they have vacated their, their, their seats. It's very laughable. It's laughable. In fact, when the press makes such statement, like I'm looking at the your scroll bar, what is in your scroll bar in this program, you're saying Fubara speaker emerge. And it's a misinformation to the public. How does the speaker emerge? How can a station like a station, post, TV, say pro? Kubara speaker emerging. How? How do you mean? The constitution is clear that the governor has one proclaim to make after every four years, in every four years, one term. So you mean you have the right to claim any house as long as the house suits him and is comfortable with him. Is that the democracy that is enshrined in our constitution? That is not correct. And again, Section 109 sub 2 in our constitution makes it clear that the man that has the right to declare seats vacant is the speaker of that house. And the speaker of the House of Assembly is Martin Samehule. And you are aware that there is a court judgment, a court rule, a court ruling 
that was given on the 20th of January 2024, where Governor Fubara was told clearly that his activities with the then four House of Assembly members against himself is wrong and illegal and he can't stand the test of time. And that every action he has taken with those four members are not known to law. And that he should bury his face in shame and return back to the 27 lawmakers because as long as they are concerned, no court of competent jurisdiction has declared those things vacant. So you mean that because people go to television and radio to go and say their seats have been declared vacant? Who, are, who is the person that declared their seats vacant? When the crisis happened in the University House of Assembly, Edison Ahir was leader of the House. He was impeached first and suspended indefinitely. The other three members, Oko, Oko Jumbo and Sokari Good, Good Boy, and the man from uh, Opopo Koro, which we are the governor comes from, we are all suspended based on the activities in the house. They are suspended members of the House of the Tenth House of Assembly, and they are all in court. These are court cases that are prejudice. And people wake up and say, "House has been uh, uh, they have uh, they, their seats have been declared vacant." Even the elders who went to court, the court told them that they don't have jurisdiction. They don't have nothing to present before the court. The matter has not even been heard. So the point you are making is that people tell the public the truth. I want to speak to you now. The governor of River State. Honorable one, I see pregnancy running. I think members are running. Everybody is running. Is that how to run democracy? Because people have a diverse view with you. Honorable one, I see Can you hear me? I can hear you clearly, sir, Mr. Presenter. Uh, to be honest with you, I, I really uh, sympathize with you because factually you are right. And uh, as, a, as a puritanical student, you know, as a puritanical uh, constitutionalist, I can't disagree with you on any of the positions you have posited, uh, to be honest with you. But having said that, the absurd reality of your state is that a governor, a governor, just recently said that the the legislature was functioning at at his mercy, and subsequent to that pronouncement, as absurd as it should be to any constitutionalist or any rule of law respecting Nigerian, as absurd as it should be. Uh, a couple of hours after, uh, another legislative assembly. I don't, you know, I can't pronounce that legislative assembly into non-existence because as we speak now, it's virtually in existence in rivers. So you have two no, uh, legislative not, it, it, chambers correct, as sir. we speak. It's not correct. No, no, it's not, it's not correct, sir. You cannot, sir. Because first of all, for you to have the legislative assembly, that must be a proclamation. Let the governor come and tell the world that he proclaimed another legislative assembly the third time. Let him come. Before okay. the speaker in any house in Mexico, there must be a proclamation by the governor of the governor of that state. What he has just shown to the world that he does not respect the constitution he swore to. And what are we to say? The offense. Oh, okay. It's a man that wrote an oath to protect the constitution as the governor has decided to break down the laws and orders of the state by disagreeing and dis abusing the constitution. Uh, it needs for us to be done. Honorable Wanosike, like I told you, uh, I'm a student of the constitution and I respect the fact that uh, your, your positions are built on uh, profound constitutional logic. Uh, however, uh, you know, I, I may not be able to make the kind of uh, partisan position, uh, partisan pronouncement you are making, but I can't fault. Having said that, uh, I, I was you told me, before sir. the show you commenced... Must, you must allow me to make this point, sir. It's important, please, for the good of Nigeria. Sir, the law says clearly, for a governor who is the head of an arm of government, to visit the second arm of government. He should visit by invitation. The governor of River State just this afternoon by past two o'clock came with barrage of militants, policemen attached to him, scaled the fence of the Riverside House of Assembly quarters, broke their gates, drove in there, and issued another 
that they should bring down the hall in which the assembly member sits to do their day-to-day -day sittings and meetings because they have diverse di divert views from him. Now, people say before now that in all the states in Nigeria, what we have is rubber stamp assembly. Today, young men and women who are in the United States of the 10th Assembly, 27 of them have said, we will stand by the constitution and the rule of law. We swore to... They are not assembly members because the governor wants them to be assembly members. They contested an election and they won. Why is the governor fighting everybody that has won an election like he won? He's fighting the, 20, the, the 23 local government chairman who won an election. We didn't work for him to emerge as governor. He has stopped our funds. As I'm talking to you, he has not heard that. And he has gone ahead to pay work out civil servants in our local government, denying us our authority, even when our tenor is still running. He has refused to conduct local government election, and he's saying that when our tenor elapsed on the 17th but, of June, but, we should but, vacate office. The question is simple. Honorable who Honorable is Honorable creating Honorable. the crisis in River State? It is the governor of River State, similarly in Kubara, uh, who does not have respect for democracy, and we're calling the international Honorable community. Honorable. This is the time At to rise Honorable up Honorable to save democracy in River State. Honorable Honorable. what specifically are you are you doing because i would i would want to believe that you should have the locals to litigate against the administrative the the alleged administrative intervention of the governor in the governance of your local government area what particularly are you doing because you know uh, you we can do here, media trial we were caught. We were caught. We went to court. When we got wind of his action, we went to court against the governor. Okay. Um, uh, Justice Samoto I, I, come, I come back gave to an you. Order. The order. The order, sir. Justice Samoto Shaw gave an order saying all parties maintain status quo, meaning nobody should talk the funds belonging to the local government. Even when the governor signed the, part, the peace pact and told Mr. President that he will not interfere with the activities of local government, he will not withhold our funds. He went ahead. He has disobeyed the court by withholding our funds, he has gone ahead to pay money from local government. He has been deducting our money for the past one year without us knowing what comes from the federation account. Okay, now, lad, I don't need to be a friend well, okay. to the governor. Let, let, let me, to be local I'll government come back chairman. to you. I'll come back to you. I, th I think we should we should have still have the opportunity uh, to talk to you before the show wraps it. Um, why would you... I, 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 so, you know, sorry if I, I... I'm going to be using you as the as the resident philosopher uh, of, of, of the of the show today, Wang Ju, are you there? Wang Ju, are you there? You want to unmute your device? Hello. Okay, I was saying that I can hear you. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, yeah. you you know why I, I I tend to want to. I use you as the resident, uh, resident constitutional philosopher uh, of, of the of the show today. Uh, I'm in a very, very uh, f funny, funny situation. Uh, you have two, <laughs> you have two partisans, one APC, another PDP, but they seem to have the same position on the issues at hand. Uh, and ironically, I know you are legacy APC, uh, 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 but uh, your your faction of APC is uh, not quite uh, on on all fours with the with the incumbent leadership of APC. I want to believe. Uh, having said that, while you your governor, the governor of your state, given what we've heard from your two other colleagues in this show, is seemingly running Bizak, is like the, the king has gone naked constitutionally in River State. And there is no, there is no seeming modicum of respect for constitutional order. There are supposed to be three arms of government. The executive, indeed, Indeed, what defines any, any polity, what defines any polity as a democracy is the fervency of the legislature, where the people of the polity uh, send people to represent them by, by electing them. 
you have a chief executive officer, chief of the executive, who does not seem to want to countenance the existence of a legislature. Uh, I, I, they, are pending, uh, they are pending judicial pronouncements and orders that are seemingly being disrespected. And allegedly, as stated by the Honorable uh, Chairman, uh, that this afternoon, uh, the, the integrity and the sovereignty, at least some of us who did a bit of uh, politics, uh, we, we read about the sovereignty of, of parliament, that the sovereignty of parliament was today defiled because the governor invited himself to the premises of the, of the river status of assembly and came with some, uh, with some goons. So, why you just give us your take of all this? Your state, your state. Well, well, I want to, I want to, I, 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 I want to quickly refuse to put myself or wear the cap of spokesperson of River State Government. That is number one. I must have to do that. But having said so, let me emphasize for the benefit of our uh, viewers that the place. The place the governor of River State visited today is not is not the officially recognized uh, uh, venue for sittings of the River State House of Assembly. That place is the residential quarters of lawmakers of uh, River State House of Assembly. Uwaju, it is a residential quarter. Now. Well, you, uh, before you go on, before you go on, well, you, are you being yes. clever by half with me? Well, you, you know, you know that uh, previously, previously, whether directly or indirectly, but some partisans who were in support of the position of the, of the governor literally, literally demolished the edifice that ought to be the official edifice of the legislature in River State. Do we agree on that? Again, you are putting me in a tight corner. You are making me a security agent. And I'm not a security agent. I do not have security report on those who demolish the hallowed chambers of the River State House of Assembly. So how can I be making such a wide allegation as to say that the uh, uh, the uh, demolition was carried out for S or Y reasons. I do not know the reason for which that place was demolished. I think there was an official government statement over that issue. And I also uh, believe that there are about five persons who are under questioning right now, who are in fact, who have been charged to court over issues surrounding the bombing of the uh, uh, House of Assembly chambers. So I would not want to be pushed to delve into issues that are purely security issues. However, like we argued the very last time, Antada, Antada. it is very important that the people of Nigeria must understand the fact that the Constitution it is far, far above any individual, no matter who that person is. Number one, we have been endumbrating on this issue of the Ifedayo Abegunde case, which was settled by the Supreme Court in 2015. We have also um, another matter settled by the court in 2022 involving 20 members of the Cross River State House Assembly. And the effect that your matter was copiously cited as reason for that judgment. And so, look, without being unnecessarily emotive, we must stick to the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And those who are hiding under the issues of illegality in the House of Assembly are doing so because they believe that by virtue of the actions of members of the House of Assembly on the 11th day of December 2023, that that automatically makes their cities to be illegal. And those who are taking actions or purportedly taking actions against 
those persons who defected on the 11th of December 2023 are doing so hiding under the cover of the uh, uh, an abridgment of section 109 sub 1G. And so our argument will be laced with plenty of intelligence. We must stop being a motive in, uh, in making such argument because at the end of the day, it will still take the cost to settle this argument. No court in Nigeria would close their eyes to the fact that clearly there is no factionalization of the PDP in Nigeria. Waju. And the Supreme Court has defined to us what faction means. Waju. Let me quickly uh, add a rider right to ahead. your reasoning. I love your reasoning. I, I, I love your reasoning. And, uh, you know, as usual, you are a fantastic, uh, you know, uh, political philosopher. But having said that, you would agree with me that at this juncture, you said, and, and I love that, you said until a court of competent jurisdiction pronounces, uh, these gentlemen and ladies, who are the members of the House of Assembly up until the controversial one emerged yesterday, at least the House that was proclaimed by the, by, by the governor, you said yes. they will still function in their capacities as, as the, the state members of the House of Assembly. In the interim, what if they then impeach the governor what becomes of you you know the last time i was telling and I, I i guess it was one of your one of the guys who featured on that on that show with us i was telling him that the the governor was walking constitutionally naked from your reasoning now what you if these members were to impeach him now what would happen just asking well i am not a seer and I am not a prophet. You are, you are too billion. To, you are too, you are too to billion for my life. the mind of those persons who are stealing claims to membership of the River Sierra Assembly, having clearly defied the provisions of Section 109 of 1G. However, if they choose to do, go ahead and uh, begin an impeachment process against the governor of River State, then, of course, the governor has his fundamental rights to, you know, challenge whatever actions they choose to take. And the courts also have powers to settle it. And so, for me, I think that we should rather be combative with ideas and not hating on each other for having uh, divergent opinions. Because politics, as it were, is a marketplace for ideas. And persons with superior ideas and logic should okay. always let, take let me go to Ikenga. Let me go to Ikenga. Uh, you know, uh, having you on the show is enough. Uh, is enough room for ideas. Let's talk to those who who have issues of uh, partisan uh, proclivity to to say to Ikenga. Are you Very there? Very well. Your chairman stated emphatically mm. that. Uh, your your party was giving uh, yeah. the members of the of the proclaimed house maybe that is a that is a, a phraseology that one should adopt now that your party was giving the members of the proclaimed house uh, a 20, 21 day ultimatum uh, to impeach to impeach uh, the governor and as it is now uh, your colleague the chairman. Uh, your colleague on this show, the chairman, Honorable uh, Onosike, just stated that uh, just maybe just as he thought it worked for him the last time when the former, uh, you know, the former house was defiled and demolished, uh, that today, uh, uninvited, he also visited uh, the place where uh, the the house is uh, you know was conducting business. Uh, have you guys not uh, have you guys not called for pandemonium in view of the things that are happening in the backdrop of the temerity that instructed your chairman's pronouncement? Ikenga. Okay, Mr. Bola. 
very much. I don't think that um, all the actions that have been taken by the governor are a direct uh, response to our call for his impeachment. Rather, it is the other way around. That the governor, in a broad daylight, dissolved an institution of government, the legislature, which was provided for, which is provided for by the constitution. I don't understand why the governor spent chance for unstatemanly and tyrannical actions. These actions of his have violently destabilized the state. One, you can see that the governor took action to proscribing, quote and unquote, the legislature. The governor went ahead to proclaim another house when there is an existing house. The governor went ahead to say that assembly members have lost their seats when these issues are subject of litigation. The governor is not interested in waiting to take his own position as the chief executive. He wants to take all the responsibilities of government, the legislature and the, and the judiciary. The responsibility of the government, of the executive, is implementation of the laws and policies made by government. And that of the legislature is to make laws and also check the excesses of the executive. And that of the judiciary is to adjudicate. And when all these divisions, disagreements come between these, these two arms of government, legislature and the executive, it is the responsibility of the judiciary to intervene. And people have gone to court seeking the intervention of the judiciary. The governor is resorting to self-help. He's not willing to wait and allow the due processes of law to take place. The governor is intimidating the assembly members. The governor is also intimidating the local government chairman. The governor is taking laws onto his own hands. What do you say? That is dictatorship. That is despotism. So, and that is not what our constitution did make provision for. Therefore, the government does not want peace. That is the reason why the governor has gone ahead to vitiate, to set aside every advice, pieces of advice put before him, even the initi initiation of peace moves by elders and no less, no less a person like the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The governor does not listen to anybody. He's not interested. I have said here repeatedly that what the governor is doing is he is trying to destabilize the state and make it very impossible for diverse people to have good governance. And that's grossly unfortunate. And you know that without good governance, river citizens will suffer. Poverty will continue to ravage. Infant mortality rate will be on the increase. Oh, and okay, then okay, Ikenga, Ikenga, let me go, let me go, let me go to the die. honorable let, let me go to honorable Wanosike. Honorable Wanosike. We have a peculiar circumstance. Um, the peculiar circumstance is such that uh, you and your party have practically uh, you, you have practically tossed good governance in, in, into abeyance in, in River State, uh, and I mean People's Democratic Party because the governor is a member of the People's Democratic Party. You are a member of the People's Democratic Party. Majority of the local government chairmen are members of the People's Democratic Party. And all we get to hear from a state that is largely executive-wise, administered by People's Democratic Party, is one trouble one day. How would you want to wrap up on this? First of all, a uh, political party is a vehicle one gets to office with. But the man uh, ran an election under our party. We cannot define what will be the overall intent and support. Uh, probably. Line up behind to become state. Well, that is not a problem. Well, what is the problem is that there is a grand norm for the democracy we run in this Nigeria. Whether it's in River State or it's outside River State, it's immaterial. That you are a governor of a state, no matter how high, how high or how powerful you are, no matter how deep your pocket or resources you have, 
the constitution is the check. The constitution is the base, is the grand norm for every activity. What we are saying, that a man decides to break the oath of office he took, has not to do with the political party. Our political party is doing very well. We are doing very, very well. But as far as we are concerned, we should pin the matter where yeah, it you are belongs. doing so well you are the doing matter. so well you are doing so well there are some uh, legend that uh, there's a division in your party so i want to believe there's no, no, no division no, no. in your party understand the point sir, mr presenter i am a local government chairman i run election under the People's democratic party i have not gone against the constitution that i swore to that a man is the governor of river state and a run election under our party does not give him the right or the room to no, I was just, I, I was just, I was just uh, asking as a, as a rider that is your party is your party in crisis? No, no, my party is not in crisis. You've asked me this question before, and I've answered you that my party is doing very well. You asked me if the governor was in the middle of PDP. I said yes, but we're talking about an individual action here. Yeah. If the deputy speaker of a state carries out. An impeachable offense and he's impeached. Does it have anything to do with his party? So, so just recently yeah, we saw an impeachment of a particular so, so, of uh, a of a So let, let's make it clear to the people. The Honorable, question is that uh, you will, you will, you will speak clear to the people. Don't worry, I'll give you time. Honorable okay, one okay, so you have tacitly agreed now that the excuse for which the members of the House of Assembly uh claimed to have uh, to, to have changed party that excuse is not valid because your party is not in crisis no i didn't say so i am saying that i don't like i won't discuss the matter that is in court because it's subjudice i will allow the court to do what they need to do people have gone to court as regards the legality of what's happening in the university house of assembly and i'm saying that what i know is that the constitution is straight the constitution is clear the constitution says clearly in section 109 sub 2 that is the speaker of the river Sales assembly who is the presiding officer that has the legitimate right to declare a seat vacant and we have seen so happen in national assembly even in the senate as long as the leadership of the house are convinced that this movement from one political party or the other meets the conditions that have been stated before them so be it if you must challenge it, you go to court. You don't sit down in the television station or sit in a beer parlor or sit in, a, in, in one meeting and say their seats are vacant. So every action they take is not a void. They exist because I say so. For crying out loud, the University of Assembly, 10th Assembly, is existing because of the Constitution of Nigeria, not because of Governor Kubara. No. It is the truth. And that truth will be told to the world. Thank you very and much. Honorable has only one was, opportunity Honorable, to Honorable, Thank you very much. We have to wrap it up. Uh, uh, Waju Ikenga, we want to say thank you to you gentlemen for having graced the show. We believe that with the unfolding, unfortunately, uh, the unfolding melodrama, uh, the, the madness that is happening in, in Rivers, this will not likely be the end of a show uh, built around the uh, developments in rivers. We just hope and pray that this will be resolved early enough for good governance uh, to positively impact the lives of Riverians. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. And like we said earlier Thank on, we invited, for balance, we invited uh, a partisan supporter of the governor and indeed the uh, supposedly newly uh, uh, newly uh, I, I would want to describe it <laughs> emerged, newly emerged speaker of the new rivers <laughs> the rivers we say or you know something is saddening something is disturbing very perturbing but you just have to laugh about it because it's so incongruous, so absurd that it, 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 it takes laughter out of you. This is where we wrap it for today. I am Bola Oba. Have a good evening. <laughs>